Hi everyone, welcome to Makeup and Murder Monday. Today we have a really sad story. Um, we are going to be talking about Jennifer Rosenbaum, who was a foster mom um, who had killed her foster child. So it is sad, just a warning if you don't like sad. I mean, all murders are sad, but this one is particularly sad. So Jennifer Rosenbaum was 27. She herself had been a foster child. She um, grew up in the system, um, was in many different foster homes, in childcare um, group homes, and in that time, she met another woman who was also a foster child who ended up having, um, growing up um, and having two children of her own, two little girls, Layla, who was two, um, and Millie, who was four, will be the ones that we'll be talking about. Um, so when, uh, when the, the biological mom, she got into some trouble, um, she, was accused of dealing drugs and ended up having to um, go to prison for that. And when she did, uh, her kids were taken away from her. And um, she had gotten a message on Facebook from Jennifer who said, I don't know if you remember me, but we used to be in um, a group home together or a foster home together. And I just wanted to let you know that um, I saw uh, that your kids are in need of foster care and I thought that I would help. So she was trying to be helpful, perhaps. Um, and because the biological mom knew her, she kind of felt comfortable. Um, you know, she didn't know her really well. And obviously they were kids when she did know her, but she still felt like she knew her enough that she could um, trust her. And her grandmother had tried to take care of the children, but had been given, um, been given notice by her homeowners association that no children were allowed. It was an elderly uh, facility and they were not going to let her keep the children. So they had to go into foster care. And at the time, Jennifer was a law student and she was working in, uh, in the, um, I think she was working in the legislature. She um, was really interested in law and law enforcement, had been a military policeman when she was in the service. So everybody had reason to believe that she would be a good person to um, take care of these children. And she couldn't have kids of her own. She was married. Um, she and her husband had tried and they couldn't have kids of their own. So they decided that this would be a good time to uh, be a foster parents for Layla and Millie. So Millie was, as I said, Millie it was four and Layla was two. And almost immediately things seemed to be a little odd um, in when the kids were brought to the home. Um, the great grandmother of the children was allowed visits and so was the mom as long as they were supervised but a lot of times she would only bring one of the children or she would call and say something had happened and she couldn't bring any of them and um, it was just really weird the grandmother was supposed to great grandmother was supposed to be getting a lot of visits and she wasn't so it, it just seemed odd, but nobody really did anything about it. Then at one point, um, and, and she was still keeping in contact with the mom on Facebook. They were messaging each other, etc. And at one point, the, um, the mom said, uh, you know, asked how the kids were doing. And she said, well, they're okay. Um, but I just got a call from the daycare. I have to go pick up uh, Layla. She has a fever. And I don't know if she'll be able to make it to your visit because we're going to go to the doctor and see how that works out. So they did and or, or she said they did. And she said, well, we can't do the visit because she's got a fever. So it turned out that Layla was always getting sick, like all the time getting sick. Something would happen. She would get sick. It just seemed to be like a common theme. Um, 
that Millie was able to go on visits, but Layla was always sick. Then one day um, on Facebook, the biological mom gets a message that says, don't worry. I just wanted you to know though, that Layla broke her leg at gymnastics. She's doing great. It's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. I'm taking good care of her. I just wanted you to know. And of course the biological mom was so appreciative and thank you for keeping me up to date on it. Um, and she's like, let me know what the doctors say. And it turns out number one, she wasn't even in gymnastics at all. And number two, it happened on a Friday and she did not take her to the doctor until Tuesday of the following week. Um, she ended up getting a cast and, um, you know, having, having extensive injury to that leg, but because she told the doctor that it happened at, at um, gymnastics, it wasn't considered that big of a deal. Um, the caseworker who was supposed to be watching these kids did go and um, go to gymnastics, but she never even asked. She went to the specific gymnastics that those girls were supposed to be attending. And all she did was sit and watch. She never even asked if indeed they did attend there. So that was her way of, I guess, checking up. It seems like a terrible way to check up to me. Seems like you should talk to somebody and maybe see what happens. So see if, and maybe see if they actually belonged there or not. So the next thing that happened is that there's a 911 call and it comes from the home and um, the, Jennifer's on the phone and she says, you know, my foster daughter is, um, is choking and I can't help her. And she is completely out of breath and she's frantic and she's like, she's not breathing, but then she says she is breathing. It's like, it goes back and forth. She can't figure out if, if she needs to do CPR, if she needs to do the Heimlich, she tries all these different things and, um, she tells the paramedics that she thought she had choked on chicken and she couldn't get the chicken out. So she tried to use a butter knife to get the chicken out. And um, of course it turns out the girl ends up dying, dying from blood force trauma to the body, had nothing to do with choking. There was no bits of food anywhere. Um, they did not see any anything that would suggest that it was an accident at all but the foster mom ends up um being free for six more days before the police even decide to talk to her and they talk to her and her husband and they do get charged um in the murder of of poor layla um, based on the autopsy, based on evidence um, showing that she died from internal injuries and had multiple injuries of varying times, based on um, testimony from four-year-old Millie, they were able to um, sentence them both, both uh, the mother and the father, so uh, both Daniel and Jennifer Rosenbaum were sentenced to um, well, Jennifer was sentenced to 40 years in prison plus 20 years probation. Her husband was sentenced to 30 years in probation, uh, 30 years in prison followed by 20 years in probation. Um, and you know, by all accounts, they looked like normal, decent people. They worked in law enforcement, both of them. Um, and they seemed upstanding members of society. Jennifer was a law student. Um, so you just really never know anybody. And it's just really sad that the system failed these girls on so many counts. Um, you know, they could have let them stay with a great grandmother if the homeowners association would have allowed it, that would have prevented all of this. Um, or they could have at least checked on the girls when multiple accounts of things were happening. So it's just really sad, really tragic. Um, just feels like the system failed everybody. At least there's justice and um, that they did get 
uh, murder and they do have lengthy sentences. Um, and the homeowners association, they filed an appeal and they did let Millie go and live with her great grandmother. So sorry, this was a really sad one. I'll try to find something less sad. I mean, murder is always sad, so I don't really know, but I hope, um, that you're enjoying the stories. Drop any in the comments, anything that you want me to cover. Um, people have been sending me stories. I've been looking at some things, just Anything that you think you want to hear more about, I'd love to talk about it. But thank you for joining me and um, stay beautiful and be safe. Mwah. Bye.